Previously, you learned how to prove triangles congruent by SSS, SAS, ASA, and AAS. Well, we add one more to this, and that is HL, hypotenuse select. And it only works with right triangles. The other four also work with right triangles, but they also work with other kinds of triangles as well. So let's go ahead and dig into this proof here. We're trying to prove that triangle ACD and triangle BCD are congruent. Looks very similar to a previous diagram we had, but you've got some different given information, so we've got some different evidence to begin with. So let's see what we can do. So AD is congruent to BD. So that's given. So that is gives us a sign. Now, what we also know here is AB is perpendicular to CD. So what that actually creates is, is this, that the two triangles are actually right triangles. And so I'm actually going to state that. Sometimes people might not put this statement in, but triangle ACD and triangle BCD are right triangles. Now what made them right triangles? Well, the perpendicular lines made right triangles because it made the right angles there. Now, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and come over to the diagram and mark those angles off as right angles. And let's talk about some parts in right triangles. See, the sides opposite those right angles are congruent, and the sides opposite those right angles actually are the hypotenuses for both triangles. So really this S is really an H. And if I could find a leg that was congruent, I'd be there. So, fortunately there is one. Right down the middle, CD. CD is congruent to CD by the reflexive property. And that gives us a leg. Thus the triangles are congruent by HL. Hypotenuse leg. And we're done. Are there other ways we could have proven these two triangles congruent? The answer is yes. But I want to show you an example that shows HL in action for you. Okay. In this particular proof, we're given AB is parallel to DE. Mark those off. Happy little triangles. And AC is congruent to DC. Now, we have to prove that C is the midpoint of BE. So we're not proving triangles are congruent. We're proving that C is a midpoint. Well, if C is a midpoint, what does that mean? Well, if C is the midpoint of BE in the diagram, that means we need to get BC congruent to CE. That's the goal. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we could prove the two triangles congruent, that would prove the parts congruent by this idea of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent, which says if two triangles are congruent, their, their corresponding sides and corresponding angles are the same. So that's the direction we need to go. So let's do that. Now, similar given to a proof that we did previously in a video and possibly in a teacher talk, so let's maybe do this one just a little bit different than we did the last time. We have in this picture vertical angles right there in the middle. 
I'm going to use vertical angles a lot in these video notes, so let's use it here. So angle ACB is going to be congruent to angle DCE. Vertical or vert angles are congruent. Let's use the fact we've got parallel lines. If we use the fact we've got parallel lines, we know that angle A and angle D are congruent because we've got alternate interior angles. So, let's put that in our proof. We can say that angle A is congruent to angle D. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So what do we have? Well, in our picture we have a side, we have an angle, we have another angle. And if we go to the picture in order, we can prove that the triangles are congruent by angle side angle. ASA. So we need to write the proper triangle correspondence. So let's name the left-hand side triangle ABC. And that's going to be congruent to... Now since angle A matches with D, D is going to have to go next. And B is going to have to match up with E, and C is in the middle there. So, great, the two triangles are indeed congruent. That means that we can say what we wanted to up here. That BC is congruent to CE. Why? Because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent. BC and CE have to be the same. So, is C the midpoint of BE? The answer is, yeah, it has to be. Why? Well, because of the definition of a midpoint. C is the midpoint of BE because BC is congruent to CE. They are on the same segment or they're collinear. Word we haven't used in a while. So thus that's the definition of a midpoint then. Alright, there's two proofs for you. Proofs, I guarantee you, they get easier with time. As your brain develops a logical order to put the pieces together, you can get really, really good at these. They do take some time. So continue to practice, continue to understand how all the pieces fit together because it is a little bit like a puzzle.